Sometimes we lose sight that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can take us out of the situation that we are in as He is the one who has put us in that situation. And there are two things that I would like to remind myself and remind all of us here today um, that we find ourselves perhaps inclining towards despair. And I'm mentioning this because of the, the volume, I would say, of conversations that have taken place over the past, uh, we'll call it a year or so, where if we look at the root of it, it's as if the conversation with the person is explaining is that they've forgotten that Allah is the doer of all things. That Allah has created the situation, that Allah is seeing the situation, and that Allah will see us and has created a way out of the situation, and He is seeing it to the end of the situation. So that's why I am inclined to speak about this and to share this, as inshallah ta'ala it will be, uh, we'll find benefit in it. The two things that I would say that I think bring an onset of despair is one, when a person moves first to say that Allah is punishing me. This is not our knowledge. This is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as to how we, uh, as to how He will deal with us with a situation that we find ourselves in. But to move directly to this, to say that I am receiving this because Allah is, puni is, is punishing me because of doing this, this, and this. We have heard this from our teachers before. You have moved now into the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is not our realm. The second point that I would just remind ourselves are, is that we are not required, we will say, we are not required to live a perfect life. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent the messengers, alayhi wa salatu wa to guide us in a manner in which to live, but perfection, al kamalu lillah, perfection is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we are people that are prone to making mistakes and having shortcomings, and as we know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there to forgive us. Now, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't strive or take ourselves to account when we make mistakes, but the key, in my opinion, is to develop our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during these troubling times. If we know Allah, then no situation is too helpless and no sadness is permanent. It is not saying that we will not be sad. It is not saying that we will not find ourselves in a situation that we perhaps don't see hope. But as we said, that no situation is hopeless, even though we may think it. And no sadness is permanent. Now, when I say that we should know Allah, what do I mean by that? I don't want to just throw that out there, for example, and make an assumption of it. When I think about this in terms of knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then knowing that a situation is not hopeless, I want to say that it's to reflect upon the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what Years ago, many of you may know our, our, our brother, mashallah, at Zaytuna College, uh, what I like to call him, Professor Harun Sellers, because of the state that he has here. He shared a word with me that sticks with me and I think about it every single day. It's a word that he calls experiential tawheed. We can read about tawheed and understand it at a theoretical level, but how are we are experiencing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His attributes every single day in our lives. That's the reality of living Islam. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understanding His attributes and we'll get into them into a moment, in a moment right now. That's what we're talking about here. How am I experiencing seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in my day to day that keeps me from losing hope? That lets me know that no sadness is permanent. That lets me know that this is happening in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in all of that to know that Allah wants me in the garden. And to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only wants good for me. So when I say this, I'm saying in the context of us to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as He has explained it to His creation through a hadith Qudsi. When He said, abdi bi. I am as my servant thinks I am. Now we have a context. I am as my servant thinks that I am. If we believe that Allah is not merciful nor wise, 
حاشا لله then we will find a world that is full of harshness and in senselessness if we do not believe in these attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah Almighty as being Al Hakim, as being Al Khabir, but experiencing them, not knowing them, but experiencing them. Allah will take me out of this situation. Allah is not oppressing me right now. He doesn't oppress. And reminding ourselves in these situations when it's easy, when our lives are easy, it's easy to do that. But what happens when life begins to bear down on us? This is what we're calling for right now as a reminder. So, as we said here, that the Prophet ﷺ has said that I am as my servant thinks that I am. And then I'm again reminding us of this, of this uh, uh, hadith where the Prophet ﷺ has said, amazing, astonishing is the affair of the believer for there is good, for there is good for him in every matter. Every matter. There is good for him in every matter. And we might ask, Okay, how? There are certain things that are problematic. He clarifies that. And he says, there is not a case, I'm sorry, that there is good in for him in every matter, and this is only the case of the believer. Now this is interesting here because in the Hadith, in the Arabic, it uses mu'min, and it doesn't use Muslim, which is going to let us know that there's a level of iman beyond the shahada and beyond the practice of Islam as a Muslim to get to the level of mu'min, which is now dealing with our iman. And this is only for the mu'min, he says. All the affairs are good for him. And he says here that if he is happy, then he thanks Allah, he shows gratitude, and that is good for him. And if he is harmed with something, he shows patience, and that is good for him. And what is the good that is associated with that patience? It's what Allah says in Quran, in Allah ma'a sabirin. Those that patiently persevere will find Allah with them. And this hadith is in Sahih Muslim. But I wanted to just say, the time is getting short here. There are a few things uh, that I wanted to just say that, you know, things that we should know. Um, as we become aware of our states, um, that you know, whatever grief we grow through, whatever hardship we endure, we must understand that we are never alone. And understand this in the context of Musa and Harun alayhim as -salam, when Allah SWT says to them, قَالَ لَا تَخَافَ إِنَّنِي مَعَكُمَا أَسْمَعُ الْرَاءِ That Allah SWT says, in this state, can you imagine what we want to talk about tribulation? The tribulation that is the life of your life starting being put in a basket and separated from your mother and sent down a river to be brought up in a house of an oppressor who is committing the level of genocide that is happening to have all of those things and then the whole cycle comes back then you are sent to that person to call them to Allah and what does Allah say La don't fear don't fear I'm with you, I am the all-hearing, and I am the all-seeing. Seeing. That's experiential tawheed for us. Whatever situation we find ourselves, Allah is with me, Allah hears me, Allah sees me, Allah knows, Allah has created this. That's where we find the raha. That's where we find the rest. That's our place of refuge. So there are three things that I would like to say that kind of the basis of this recognition. There are three things, insha'Allah. One, that we need to know. What are the things that we need to know in order to develop our relationship with Allah? Two, there are things that we need to do in order to maintain our closeness to Allah. And then three, that there are things that we need to aspire for which will, cons will consistently improve our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Times certain hardships are so consuming that we cannot focus on anything but the difficulty. But we have to remember that if we were to enumerate the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Allah says in Quran, we would never be able to enumerate them. And there are just two things I want to mention. Imagine that, that just for today, the day that Allah has given us the ability to gather on Jumu'ah, and that we can make sajda, and we can say, Ya Allah. Let's look at those two things very quickly right now. Gathering on the Jum'ah, the Prophet ﷺ says the best day the sun rises over is Friday. On it Allah created Adam, 
On it, he was made to enter paradise. On it, he was expelled from it. And that the last hour will take place on a Friday. So just the fact that we were able to witness this Friday, we are alive on the best day in the sight of God. And Iman, alhamdulillah, is alive in our hearts enough to bring us to the masjid to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To allow us to be in a state, as the Prophet said, as Abu Huraira said in the hadith on the Prophet dua. That, that, that the Prophet ﷺ has said in the hadith that the servant is closest to his Lord during prostration. So increase your supplication therein. Allah has given us life. It is Jum'ah. We are able to make dua and be the closest to our Lord. Alhamdulillah. May Allah continue to bless us. Aqulun qawli hadha wa saqfirli wa lakum misal mu'minin ya qawmi saqfirullah innahu huwa ghafurur rahim. إن الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر وشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا مولانا سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله خير النبي اجتباه للعالمين أرسله أرسله الله بدين الحق ليوثر الدين كله ولا كره الكافرون عباد الله أذكركم بتقوى الله سبحانه وتعالى أذكركم بقوله سبحانه وأذكركم بقوله سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم حيث يقول في الحديث اتق الله حيث ما كنتم أذكركم بشرف مكان مصطفى صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم حيث يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل Thing, Allah is putting us in a win-win situation over and over and over again. Over and over and over again. Alhamdulillah, may Allah continue to bless us and to increase us. In closing, I just want to say here that we, our ultimate aim is to, is to earn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure and to enter the Jannah. And all of us fall short in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as He is to be worshipped. And perhaps we forget uh, in our tawbah or reflecting on our state. So perhaps these tests, as burdensome as they are, will ease the burden for us on the Day of Judgment. That is our hope. That we are not, this isn't, this isn't just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending us through this exercise or it's some sort of punitive relationship. He doesn't have that relationship with us. He has a relationship of love, loving His creation. Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our hearts to receive that love. Allahumma rahman mu'minina wal mu'minat, al muslimina wal muslimat, al ahyai minhum wal amwat, ya rahman rahimin. Allahumma kun ma'na wa la tukun alayna abdan ya rabbil alameen. Allahumma rahamna fawq al ard, وتحت الأرض ويوم نقوم بين يديك يا رب العالمين اللهم ردنا دينك ردا جميلا يا رب العالمين اللهم ردنا دينك ردا جميلا يا رب العالمين اللهم ردنا دينك ردا جميلا يا رب العالمين اللهم خفف عن أمتي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم وانصر أمتي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم أطف عن أمتي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم أرحم أمتي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وآخر دعوان الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة يرحمني يرحمكم الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته as we know this is a beautiful uh, moment brother Sanjay my name is Dawood you you as well nice to meet you الحمد لله so الحمد لله this uh, uh, what we call a testimony of faith reciting the shahada to me what it represents, we understand in our tradition that that um, if you could come here, inshallah, oh, yeah. you're being requested front and center. Okay. <laughs> that it is all a, it's just an outward affirmation of what God already knows exists inside of you. Okay, so we are here now to witness this as a group. Mm -hmm. Your transition into the what we call the fold of Islam. Okay. So the first thing that we have to ask is that there is no. Uh, compulsion in Islam so that you are making this decision no one is forcing you this is a decision that's being made by yourself 
and that you understand in full capacity of the decision that you are making. Yeah, I understand. Alhamdulillah, Allah is the best of witnesses. So once that is clear, I can just explain to you, as we say that um, you know, entering into uh, Islam is with the testimony of faith. We're going to declare that. I'm going to say it three times in Arabic. I'm actually, uh, I was an Arabic teacher for some time, so I'll, okay. <laughs> just teasing, alhamdulillah. <laughs> you can follow me, any difficulty, I'll just take a few points off afterwards. Okay. <laughs> so inshallah, we will, uh, God willing, I will repeat in Arabic, and then you can repeat after me, and then I'll say it one time in English, so we're very clear on what has been, what has been said. Sure. Okay? Um, and as I just like to mention to you that, you know, I, I, I myself am a convert as well to the faith, mm -hmm. and uh, understand that it is a, 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 a journey. It is a marathon and not a sprint. And there's a whole life that exists for us, inshallah ta'ala, to understand. And it's that journey of our life, so to speak. So alhamdulillah, if you are, um, if you are okay with me, um, we, can, we can, you know, hold hands, if that is okay with you. Yeah. Uh, shaking hand like this, I think, is, is, is good to do, inshallah. Okay. So with that, in reciting the testimony of faith, inshallah, if you could repeat after me. Okay. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. An, An la, la ilaha, ilaha illallah, illallah wa ashhadu wa anna, anna muhammadan, muhammadan abduhu, abduhu wa rasuluhu wa rasuluhu ashhadu ashhadu an, An la, la ilaha, ilaha illallah, illallah wa ashhadu Anna, Anna Muhammadan, Muhammadan Abduhu, Abduhu wa Rasuluhu. Wa Rasuluhu. Last time. And shall I encourage everyone to recite it together? One of our teachers has said and reminded us of this Ya Ayyuladina Aminu, Aminu. O you who believe, believe. And they asked if we are already believers, how do we believe? And they said, Jaddidu Imanukum, right? Renew your faith. So inshallah, we can recite this with our brother, inshallah. Ashhadu Ashhadu an, an la la ilaha ilaha illallah illallah wa ashhadu wa ashhadu anna anna muhammadan muhammadan abduhu abduhu wa rasuluhu wa rasuluhu i bear witness i bear witness that there is no god that there is no god Except for Allah, except for Allah, and I bear witness, and I bear witness that Muhammad, that Muhammad is his servant, is his servant and messenger, and messenger. Takbir, Allah. takbir, Allah. takbir. Allah. takbir. Allah. Alhamdulillah, brother Sanjay, welcome, welcome to Islam. Thank you, thank you. welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> Pleased to meet you. Very thank nice to meet you too. May God bless your journey. Thank you. This is a, a gift from the community that oh, comes. And okay. it's, a, it's a beautiful um, kind of collection of, 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 of um, um, resources to help you in your journey. Oh, okay. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.